Hi, I'm Phil Dispenza, and this is Collecting, Investing, or Somewhere in Between. About nine months ago, I started this series to inform your average person about different parts of uh, collecting, different items you can collect, and uh, in, within those items, uh, what would be good investments. And I had made this decision uh, last summer while watching other people's videos where they would take one item, say comic books, and they would list five or ten or something uh, most probable items you should invest in. And I just didn't like the limitations that other people set. So what I did is I actually decided to make my own series. And the reason why is because when you have a comic book, you have a video game or other collectible, um, there's usually not five or ten items to invest in. There could be dozens, if not hundreds, uh, of choices. And I wanted to do this nine-month video. I call it a nine-month video um, because the market, I wanted to describe how the market's been since I decided to do this last year. Um, right now, uh, it's beginning of May. A stock market is hitting records still, uh, which surprises me. But uh, they say that the dollar is pretty weak. And when the stock market doesn't do well, collectibles usually do. So this is a, a, a little, you know, uh, confusing to me. But since everybody says the dollar is weak, uh, they're, they're turning to stuff like uh, cryptocurrency and things. And uh, they're putting their money in, you know, different areas. So... Uh, we're going to cover the collectible areas and, you know, how the market's been and where I think the market's going to go, um, you know, in the future. So I'm going to start with comics, of course. I did the, or been working on the comic series and I'm going to continue to work in the comic book series. I figured that's going to last me another four, three, four months. Uh, when I first started this, I thought maybe I'd give, uh, you know, a few videos, three to five videos per collectible, but it turns out it's going to be a lot more than that. I'm going to get some water. Of course, it's Sunday morning again. It's warm in the room, but I got to deal with it. So comic books, um, vintage, and I covered all the vintage golden age, silver age already. Uh, and I'm going to be doing the bronze age real soon. Um, probably either next week or the week after I'm going to start releasing. I already put out the intro. But vintage comics, again, uh, holding their own um, for the most part. Uh, you can go into my videos and see exactly what I suggest, what I think is not going to hold value. But again, everything with this market, and I'm talking about not just comics, but market and collectibles in general, is always going to be conditioned. So even stuff that's soft in the market, certain genre, certain areas, um, if you have something that's really, really nice condition, it's graded high, professionally graded, uh, no matter what it is, it'll always command a premium over whatever the rest of the common items or common you know, one issue or whatever is going to be selling for. So vintage, again, the superheroes, anything in your face, any TV shows, any uh, movies and things uh, should create and hold interest for the future. So um, you have to watch, and, and I mentioned this in the Bronze Age, Bronze Age introduction, um, the quantity that's out there. Now, there's certain things that it, it doesn't matter how much is out there. Uh, the prices are just shooting through the roof. And I'm going to talk about this specifically in the Bronze Age. But just to give an example, the Incredible Hulk 181 Wolverine. Uh, I mean, this thing could be in pieces and people are paying hundreds of dollars. Uh, missing stuff. It, it's I don't understand it. Um, but... You know, eventually, I can't see things just keep climbing. There's got to be uh, a, the bubble burst. It has to come eventually. So 
you know, vintage, like I said, should hold, you know, where I've already described. Um, what did I write here? Modern. Uh, modern books are a little tougher, and I'm going to get to that eventually. We're going to—I'm not going to go into detail with modern because modern's all over the place. Sometimes a, a new company will come out, and then you know their pu books are popular, and then two years later, nobody even cares about them anymore. So you have to watch that. Uh, my suggestion is try to always pay, you know, less than market on anything, and I'm not just talking about comics; I'm talking about anything. So. If it comes down, it might come down to where you paid, so you still didn't lose anything on the deals. Um, if you can buy wholesale, uh, modern's tough. Uh, the prices are three ninety nine, four ninety nine for a lot of these books, and because the prices are so high, the print runs aren't high. So you you have a, a to weigh whether or not you know you you think that something's going to be and that's the problem if something becomes hot right away uh the prices shoot up because there's not much you know printed there's not not a lot out there so you have to be careful if you're collecting that's fine you know you're collecting because you you like it but investing in modern is very tough uh if you hear there's a new character going to come out or they're they're going to introduce a character that's on the screen already that's possible you might want to buy multiples um but i'm going to move on to um variants uh, that was my next section and this goes particularly with modern um you have a new new star wars one or new superman one or whatever it is the amount of variant covers that they come out with all these stores have their exclusives and you know you do a search of my comic shop uh, on say uh, Star Wars Jedi uh, Academy, I think that's it. No, it's not Jedi Academy. Oh my God, High Republic. It's the newest one. Um, that, you know, you might have 15, 20 covers, and again, you know, at four dollars a piece, and that's if you can get them at four dollars a piece, because some of these are the one in twenty-five variants, one in fifty variants. You might be paying fifty or hundred or two hundred for them. Um, you know, you you have to think. Is this worth buying? If you're a collector, it's fine because you're buying it to keep. But if you're buying it to flip, it's tough. Uh, and just, again, I've mentioned this before, and I've mentioned in the Bronze Age intro, just because something really hasn't uh, been in the market, uh, on the stands, bought, and, and read and stuff, does not mean it's going to be a 9-8. You have to watch condition because, you know, Books getting shipped to the comic shops can get dinged, or uh, the wear, or the cheap ink that they're using a lot, especially with Marvel, uh, rubs off on a backing board. So you, now you have to be prepared on, on you know, keeping it, finding it in perfect condition, trying to find it as perfect as possible, and then keeping it in perfect condition. So again, collecting, you're fine. Investing, it's tough. I don't suggest modern at all for investments but again we'll get to that when i get to the detailed uh signed i actually wrote this uh signatures and it's tough because uh i wasn't planning on covering signatures i don't think i wasn't really it, it didn't cross my mind but uh having books signed most people didn't like it in the beginning especially if they signed huge things all over the cover now it's like they draw you know you have artist sketch color and you know sometimes it's just a cheesy profile you have to watch <clears throat> what you're paying and how much you're paying because uh there's certain artists and i don't want to you know degrade any artists especially those who have been around for 40 50 years um but you know they're older and I don't even know if it's the artists themselves or their handlers, but you know, you had, you paying four or $500 for a sketch and you know, they draw a symbol or they do a cheesy profile that takes them literally 10 seconds. And I never understood it. I never did. I mean, you want their autograph, that's fine. But you, again, you have to watch for signatures because you know, Stanley's signature, Stanley was around for a long time and then he was signing for years with witnesses so there's a lot out there so if you're going to buy something uh with a signature watch 
you know, if they if somebody is in the market quick or doesn't like to sign, maybe those are the signatures you want to invest in. But uh, you know, somebody signing something to thousands of copies a year, you know, there's going to be no rarity in it. Uh, and people again, they're investing, and you know, you want to try to buy stuff. And I'm going to go to get off the comics in general again. Um, as low as possible and, you know, make your money. And people are always saying, when's the time to sell? You'd never know when the time to sell is. Uh, if so, a movie comes out, a TV show comes out, usually if the TV show is good and continues, the, the, the character should hold value. But a movie, again, everybody invest, the, you know, the speculates and then the movie's done and, you know, they move on to the next thing. Then the character might slip a little. So when the best time to sell for that would be right before the movie or right after the movie, literally within one month, I would say. But again, otherwise, you got to say, where am I going to take my money? Buy, say you pay $10 for something, you can get $50 for it. If you hold it for another three years, you might get $100 for it. And I've mentioned this, I think, in the intro too. Sell, buy something else. Can you make more than that hundred dollars in three years so you know people are like oh i sold it too cheap or something did you i mean did you take that money and reinvest it and then make more money than uh than you would have if you held it and again there's no guarantee if you hold something you know it could get damaged it could get stolen um you know you sell it you have the money <laughs> Uh, whether or not the money's worth anything is a different story. Okay, so enough with the comics. I just wanted to get some general things out on the comic books. Video games. Again, um, I've touched this. I covered a lot of the video games. If I ever, my wife says she's going to look for it. If she ever finds the other uh, more vague or, or obscure systems, not vague, um, I'll cover more video games. But, you know, I covered the basic vintage stuff. Um, early on, again, it, it was about if you could find stuff sealed. If they sealed it, again, certain companies early on, they didn't, they didn't seal their stuff. It was, you know, they didn't get shrink wrap things, Atari and stuff. But if you could find early sealed in nice condition because you know there's you got to watch because when i say early sealed i'm talking about the first two three years of the company being out if that um because i've mentioned this before warehouses are sitting out there and you see it all the time you know you overpay or somebody will overpay for something and then the next thing you know especially if they want that first graded nine eight or whatever and then you know, 50 copies of 9.8 now, 100 copies of now 9.8 now, because there are warehouses full. So you have to look online. Uh, but early stuff, people bought, they played, they opened. Uh, so finding something sealed early on, and I bring up the Super Mario Brothers. Um, I don't know, I heard something over half a million dollars or something now for a copy. I think there's two known of that the second version is none first version supposedly as I, I understand but is it worth a half a million dollars i think that's crazy you know i <laughs> it's not the first video game um i mean it's not even close to being a first video game but you know a lot of people know it and i guess mario's uh popular enough that somebody's willing to pay it I would never pay it. Uh, other people who um, collect Nintendo, I heard probably or used to collect Nintendo, would never pay that. Uh, and that's where if you can find a copy, you, you turn it over, get rid of it immediately. Because, you know, it might sell for three times as much. Who knows? But again, you have to hold it. You have to hope it doesn't get damaged, hope it doesn't get stolen. And, uh, you know, you, you know, you'd rather have the money, I would think. So what else did I write about vintage games? Graded and vintage. So new games, I, I again, hit or miss, but I doubt anything new. Um, P3, 
PC games. I haven't talked anything about this yet. Uh, a lot of stuff is being sold with Steam, so they're not even making games anymore physically. You just buy it online and play it on your computer or whatever. And I don't know if you do that with other systems uh, because I don't own any new systems. So vin video games, it's still early. Um, I think if you have nice uh, copies of things, nice boxes, not much wear, that'll command the premium. Um, just don't, you know, watch how much is out there uh, because once senses start hitting, uh, you, you'll find that a lot of these games shouldn't be commanding $1,000, uh, maybe a few hundred. And it happened with comic books when the comic books first started getting graded. Uh, people were paying astronomical prices for high grades. Oh, highest grade uh, yet or something. And who cares? Because a week from now, it could be 10 of those same grades. So you, if you're first, you try to make your money quick. You know, it, it's tough now. And you have to be on top of things. Um, cards. And I haven't gotten to cards yet. I haven't gotten to anything else besides video games or comic books. Pokemon, you can't find it now. Um I, I probably would just suggest if you find it out in the wild in a retail store for a normal retail price, buy it up, flip it for double your money. Um, that's probably where you you should be at right now. Magic the Gathering, the vintage stuff is a lot better. I don't know anything about uh, newer, th newer cards at all, um, but I see it on the shelves. Pokemon I don't see on the shelves at all. Uh, non other non-sport collectible card games. I haven't heard much of anything about those, but here's where you might want to be on the ground floor. Things like, and make sure you try to buy first edition, uh, first release. So Star Wars, a Star Trek, uh, maybe even Buffy the Vampire. Who knows? Uh, I picked up Austin Powers, uh, Spy Who Shagged Me expansion booster boxes, and I was paying two dollars a box so again the buy price the buy price is always it so if i i'm sitting on 10 boxes you know if you have the room to put it that's how you make your money you have maybe you have to wait another 10 years for something to be worth money maybe there's only three cards in that entire box that'll be worth money but grading it seems like and i'm gonna go from experience Every grading co uh, company out there, whether it's the video games, the comics, the cards, whatever it is, they're right right now. They're overwhelmed with the amount of product being sent in to be graded and behind. And I'm talking about any grading company, unless you're you know uh, not a serious grading company, but any of the bigger ones seem to be behind, probably at least two to four months, maybe six months. On their grading so you have to take that into effect too um sports cards i keep thinking that people aren't going to want the vintage stuff or kids nowadays probably wouldn't want the vintage stuff and again it's the people you know if, if you if you grew up and you're baby boomer you grew up with the 60s and 50s and stuff a lot of that stuff is still worth money but is it going to be 30 years from now when the kids who they, they they know who maybe Mickey Mantle is, but you might not know somebody else like Bob Feller, you know, just throwing a name out there, Bob Gibson. <laughs> uh, they, they were semi stars, but are they going to be worth, you know, Johnny Bench or, you know, I grew up Dave Concepcion, you know, all those players, baseball players and stuff, you know, and you always know the most popular ones, the ones who always had the most home runs, the best pitchers and the best win loss, you know, whatever. Um, but are they going to care about it? And right now, even 80 stuff, 80 stuff that was sitting thousands and thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands of, of cards sealed all of a sudden are commanding some money. I heard from my friend uh, that Mark McGuire cards, 87 tops. He said he has 100,000 87 tops cards and he has at least 200 McGuire's and they're going, I think I they said like $600, $800 and 10. But again, here we go. Are you gonna have a 10 or are you gonna have a nine or an eight or whatever? So you, you have to take consideration, okay, a 10 is selling for this, but 
do you have tens? And then whether or not it's worth, you know, nine, is it worth grading if it's a nine? And so I always make a suggestion, um, especially on stuff, newer stuff, because you might not see the flaw. You know, these, these grading companies, you know, they have loops and, you know, bright, nice lamps and stuff. They look at everything under. Uh, so, you know, you might not spot the flaw that they do. So pre-screen, if a company offers a pre-screen, a uh, minimum of a nine or a nine five or nine eight or whatever it is, uh, you know, whatever collectible you're sending to, uh, you might want a pre-screen if there's a, like, if you, you know, look at your market. Uh, that's a big thing. You know, if 80s are selling, you know, Mark McGuire 80 is selling for twenty dollars. It's not going to be worth sending it in. Uh, and not, if a nine's worth a hundred dollars, that probably is worth sending in. So, put a pre-screen of nine. Send the hundred Mark McGuire's or whatever. Put a nine pre-screen. So you're guaranteed to not pay for something that's not worth it. Uh, it's all about the money uh, with investors. Uh, if you're a collector. You, you, you know, if you have all this stuff, you know, send some in and then make some money on the back end and uh, to pay for your collection to get more stuff. That's what I used to do. That's how I got into this whole thing. You know, I started as a collector for probably about th two years or three years with comics. And then I started buying duplicates because, you know, certain books were hot. And the next thing I know, I'm buying a collection. I don't want certain things. And you, somewhere along the line, I became a dealer. Um, what else do I have written here? Uh, action figures. <laughs> um, vintage, again. Pre-1990, popular ones, original in the package. Again, condition means everything. So Star Wars, uh, the Star Trek, any Migos, probably. And I'm going to get into the action figures eventually. Um, I don't have a lot anymore, you know, whatever I used to have. I had the whole Star Wars line from Kenner through the power of the force, loose, mint. Uh, and I sold it when I had my store um, 25 years ago because uh, I needed the money. But, you know, I made a few hundred dollars on, on the transaction. I didn't have them for long, uh, probably no more than two years. Uh, but I had everything dead, mint, complete. And you're going to find even loose... You know, a figure might be worth twenty-five to one hundred dollars, uh, depending depending on the rarity. It might even be worth more. Um, sometimes you'll have GI Joe. I mentioned GI Joe. I mentioned Transformers here. Um, the eighty stuff is crazy right now. Uh, anything eighties, loose, sealed, sealed. Of course, is going to bring you better, you know, investment, but. Loose, you can probably make some good money. Whether or not you could find this stuff in the wild, it's tough. You know, my friend calls me up a couple of weeks ago and says, I'm at a town wine garage sale. And he found the, I think it's, I thought it was a Ticonderoga. It's Sar Saratoga uh, aircraft carrier, something or other. I never even looked it up, but he said it was loose. And it was, he says he's got to clean it up. It's going for a couple hundred dollars. So, and that was not the original aircraft carrier from GI Joe. So, action figures, '90s right now. And again, I'm going to get into details with this stuff. But a lot of the '90s stuff, not yet. But guess what? It could be. So, I, did I put anything? Toys in common. I put board games. Again, it's always about condition. Uh, toys, I, I thought about Beanie Babies at one point. I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the intro or one of the intros. Uh, I was buying a Beanie Babies. I kept seeing them for a quarter or 50 cents. Uh, you find them in some of these thrift stores, a bag of them for three bucks, five bucks. You know, you can get 10, 15 Beanie Babies for that. I, I'm thinking eventually they got to come back uh, somewhere along, along the line. Uh, cyclical. Everything's cyclical. So... The kids who bought Beanie Babies, Beanie Babies was in the 90s. They're, you know, they're 20s, they're in their 20s, uh, maybe 30. And the, right now, you have to worry whether or not they have student loans and stuff. But give it another five or 10 years. And again, the, the rarest Beanie Babies, of course, will be worth the money. The best ones with the, the original tags or the tags that aren't bent and stuff. But 
again, if you're paying a quarter and you can get five dollars each, you think of the the profit margin on that. And it's not about one. It's you know, if you have a hundred of them and you sell them for five dollars a piece, that's five hundred dollars. And if you pay twenty five dollars and you get five hundred dollars, you know, again, it's worth it. But I would think that a lot of these beanie babies are going to be ten to twenty dollars a piece, especially the bears and things. Um, I don't know if there's anything else specific I want to talk about, but collectibles in general, right now, I think people are putting a lot of money in. You have to be careful. Um, I personally wouldn't uh, put in serious money, but I don't think I've ever put in serious money on anything. And I'm seeing some realization come into effect. Um, I've been trying to buy Atari games, and I think I've mentioned this. That I, now I was paying up to $5 for complete box games and stuff. And sometimes they're selling 6 to 10 for lots. You know, you buy a lot of games of 10 and they're selling for $100. But I think people are realizing just because it's Atari does not mean it's worth money. Uh, maybe they're getting burned. And so I, it seems like I might be getting less competition because I just made a purchase. And oh, that's the other thing. I, I almost forgot about that. Uh, but I just made a purchase that the guy had 20 box games. He was asking $55 and he wanted some crazy shipping. It was like 45. It was like a hundred dollars for 20 box games, but eight of them, I never read this. I didn't look at it, but I, I had put it on my watch list. He says eight, eight games don't work or don't work correctly or, or work for like three seconds and then stop working. Uh, with my, um, oh, my neck. I hope you heard that <laughs> crack neck with my inventory. I could fill in it's because they're common games. If the game doesn't work, I have extras. I could just throw in it at work, but you know, I just made a deal and that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, my, I'm calling it the new series, but I, you know, it's under this collecting, investing or somewhere in between my deals and steals. And I didn't do it for April because I didn't have enough. And I, I mentioned this when I first started deals and steals. If I buy enough th items for the month that I think, you know, warrants showing uh, in a video for the month, then I create a, a, a video. So I have one for uh, February and I have one for March. April, I didn't have that many things. But now that I've made this extra purchase of 20 games because I made the deal with the guy, I wasn't... I, you know, I thought his uh, price with the shipping was too high. So I wound up getting it cheaper. So when uh, I get this, uh, I'm going to make my video. So for April and May are going to be combined deals and steals for April and May. And, uh, you know, I'm going to cover everything that I purchased for these two months. And for all I know, I'm going to buy even more stuff. But well, this is what I'm saying. The guy couldn't sell those games for $100. He couldn't get $5 per complete box game in box, uh, possibly because of the eight games that don't work or because the condition's not perfect. And, you know, you got to realize, and everybody keeps thinking, oh, I had all these, I got Atari games. I'm going to ask $10 a piece. I went to that flea market that time. I had a fight with the guy who was cursing me out uh, because he had pitfall for $5 loose. And, you know, he wouldn't negotiate. I, I had a, a empty box with an uh, instruction manual. I didn't have my cartridges. I don't think I've told this story. I didn't have my cartridges down here in Florida at the time, my loose cartridges. So I wanted to complete the pitfall, and he, he wouldn't budge in this $5. And I said, well, uh, how much do you pay? Oh, I pay a quarter. And I'm like, you know, because I said if he's willing to pay $2, I'd sell him a whole bunch. I mean, I got pitfall alone. I probably had 15 to 20 copies um you know loose so i had a big fight with the guy he's cursing me out and then i start cursing back um but uh, you know the the atari is not magic now all of a sudden i think the grading magic i keep using the word magic the grading uh you know thing uh that everybody ooh, it's worth thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars people are coming to the realization that 99% of what out there is what out there. I can't even speak. 99% of what is out there 
uh, is not worth grading and is not worth hundreds or thousands of dollars. And you're lucky if you can get $5 or $10 or something for them. You know, with me, I test everything. I show the flaws. Um, if I, I haven't gone through, I don't know, if I'm not going to say I'm lazy. It's just a lot of work. Uh, and I'm working a full-time job, so it's not that easy. Um, but, you know, I might just take the lowest or things I have the most, like, eight or 12 copies of or something and just throw it into lots, lowest grades and stuff and just, you know, part with them. Or I might do a, a yard sale in front of my house or something because, you know, I got too much, quote, junk, you know, and you try to take the good with the bad. Uh, and I'm always working on my website, you know, adding new things. So that's what I, I was going to finish with uh, before I remember deals and steals. But just remember not everything's worth it. I, I, I'm going to bring this up to this antique uh, store I just went to yesterday. I was there a few weeks ago. And the woman has, she had this little stack of comic books and they were garbage, uh, Valiant or Image or whatever. And, and they're not first issues. Or even if there are first issues, they're not worth anything. And she's got $5 a piece on them. And I'm like, you know, she's crazy. This, these are the people that don't know what they're doing. And one of the books was coverless and she had five dollars on it and i actually brought it to her attention the first time i was there and she's like well i paid a lot of money for these things so i have to ask i'm like okay but you can ask but you're never going to sell that book you, you you i mean i would probably give that away <laughs> because of the fact that it's coverless and it's a modern from the 90s so you know these people have no idea and sometimes you find some good deals in these antique stores but uh, most of the time you won't uh because these people have it in their mindset i'm just going to price every comic book at two dollars or every comic book at five dollars or every postcard at a buck or two unless they're special halloween or valentine's or you know uh clap saddle i forgot what the, the artist's name was because my wife started buying a lot of the postcards that that artist did back in the day but you know you got to realize you know there is work behind finding good deals uh there's work behind trying to make money uh but you have to do homework i would say make sure you know what you're doing before you may drop a dime because you're going to wind up getting burnt somewhere along the line and that's what i'm here for I'm here to give you choices, uh, not five choices, not 10 choices. When I cover the Bronze Age, I might just marvel alone. I'm going to cover 50 to 75 uh, issues that I would recommend uh, investing in. And, uh, you know, we'll take it from there and uh, hope these nine months have been good. You know, I don't have a lot of views, but, you know, I try to be as informative as possible. Uh, it may seem a little long winded. I don't have my stars and bells and whistles behind me uh i got i move i bought a new bookshelf for three dollars i paid a bookshelf so i moved my nintendos onto the new bookshelf and that was the old bookshelf i gotta move it over here so then now you don't see the piles of comics behind me right now but anyway so like share subscribe uh as i always say tell your friends and family and i guess i'll see you in a week or two with marvel bronze age see you later